Welcome back again to the last episode of the Weather Watch for the Great North American Eclipse of 2024 for Friday, April 5th. This is your host, Dr. Scott Denstead, founder of the Easy Weather Brief Progressive Web App. All right, this will be the last uh, feature of this particular series for this eclipse. Um, I'm going to be, unfortunately, headed the, the direction of the eclipse path, uh, so I won't be able to do these for Saturday or Sunday. Uh, but I do appreciate everyone who did watch this over the last uh, several days here. And uh, you can show me a little bit of love by you know, putting that the subscribe button and, uh, and give me a like or two. Um, I will be uh, potentially doing some other future videos uh, in the area specifically of aviation weather in this channel, so you know, check back then. Anyway, let's get into it and we'll try to work through some of the details not a lot has changed since the last time we talked. There is this occluded area of low pressure that's, for the most part, starting to zero in, that it's going to be somewhere in the upper Midwest there with a, an occluded front, a cold front extending down here that's going to be becoming more stationary. There is some precipitation, thunderstorms in this region, but most of that's going to be later in the afternoon. It should not affect the eclipse in terms of that, but it might affect your drive or your commute away from that area in the uh, latter part of the afternoon. And you can see that uh, how this has progressed here. Basically, you can see a pretty powerful, potent low pressure coming out of the central and northern high plains and that moves into the um, northern plains there and becomes occluded. So ultimately, it's a pretty powerful weather system overall. We're kind of fortunate at this point that it has weakened quite a bit in that in that sense. We look at the probability of precipitation here for the longer range forecast. And again, you see that there's a fair amount of precipitation all ahead of that weather system, especially down here in Texas. Again, most of that will be in the afternoon, so not a real big problem from that standpoint. So if you're in this region here where you see the brown areas, you have the, probably the best chance of actually seeing this eclipse is what we're seeing in this particular case. But that doesn't mean there won't be some high cloudiness or other cloudiness, but for the most part, no major weather in that area. All right, so let's uh, jump to looking at some of the details here. I'm going to go back to Pivotal Weather uh, where they provide this particular forecast. This is the National Blend of Models forecast here. Anywhere you see bluish colors, you're going to be seeing uh, cloud coverage that's going to be over 50%. Uh, and again, it doesn't tell you whether it's low clouds, high clouds, or anything like that. But we do know there's a fair amount of high clouds streaming in this region here, as we'll see in just a bit. Uh, so we're looking at uh, a lot of areas down in Texas to be 80, 60%, 69. So broken cloud coverage. Uh, in some cases, a lot of the cloud coverage will be a low cloud coverage uh, as well down low, and we'll see how that's uh, progressing as that weather, we have the high off the coast of um, the Carolinas, and that's bringing in that southerly uh, fetch off the Gulf of Mexico, and that's driving a lot of moisture up into this region. But again, if you look at here, right around um, the center part of this eclipse path, and also up in the northeast, up in the New Brunswick, those white areas are essentially, for the most part, few clouds, scattered clouds, maybe even clear skies in many areas. So I think that's probably the best viewing location at this point in time. If you're trying to make a break for a particular area, I'd be going to uh, one of those two different areas for now, based on what we see here in this forecast. Let's jump to the um, other component here, which is looking at, let me see if we can get a update the Pivotal weather has been having a little bit of delay here. This is valid uh, in the morning time frame, so this is not valid actually at the eclipse time. Uh, but we can see that we have a, a fair amount of, this is the simulated infrared satellite imagery, and you can see we have that moisture plume coming in. It's really mostly high level here in this particular case. And that's again driving, uh, in many areas, driving the potential of seeing some high clouds uh, along that eclipse path even up here 
into the Buffalo region, uh, New York, um, Erie, potentially. Uh, looks like Watertown North looks pretty good, but that, that swath there over the uh, over Buffalo in, in the uh, western part of New York might be problematic from that sense. We can look at the previous run of the model here. Let me uh, just do that real quick. Uh, I'll go down to the 6Z run of the model and we can look at that and that will show something that's closer to that. You can see again that high cloudiness that's occurring there. Uh, there may be some breaks in this, but we just don't know at this point in time. We can look at the uh, precipitation and moisture and, and get into the, the details there. Let me switch back to the 12Z run so we can see that. Um, if we look at that 300 to 500, uh, 300 to 700 relative humidity, lots of areas here that are showing up as being a pretty uh, pretty reasonable in terms of the moisture content. It's not extreme, it's not as bad as it was in the past, but still the problem is we have this high that's sitting out here. And that's we're going to be pumping in a lot of that low level moisture in that region. So we're going to see still the possibility of seeing fairly uh, moist air. So if you want to see the uh, the eclipse for sure, you want to be in these brown areas up here. So that certainly the northeast is is that way. Pretty good uh, viewing here. With, you get some of the light brown regions, not bad. Maybe even some of the northern parts up here through uh, Cape Girardeau down through Little Rock maybe into parts of Dallas and that area might see some some breaks in the clouds but unfortunately uh, it's still not uh, you know what again what you would love to see is is uh, a, you know this really really uh, dry air kind of move in like something like that for this for Texas but that's not going to happen until well into Tuesday so unfortunately that's what we have to deal with here uh, we look at the precipitable water amounts here again it's showing a lot of that low level fetch from the from the uh, Gulf of Mexico and that's bringing in a lot of especially low-level moisture here um, and unfortunately that's just the the nature of this with this high where it's parked um, up here you can see the uh, again the, the possibility of having pretty clear conditions up in the Northeast again from about Watertown New York maybe up to the north all the way up into New Brunswick and I do believe there will be a, a really good area here north of Little Rock and up in toward Cleveland, Columbus, um, Dayton in that region should see some uh, some um, decent viewing in that area and maybe not completely cloud free uh, in those areas but um, probably good enough to be able to see the the eclipse uh, pretty well and hopefully everything will just work out fine in those regions. Um, and we look at the uh, 500 millibar charts here. This again shows us where uh, this is a, a meteorologist, uh, you know, kind of what we call the waistline or belly button in the atmosphere where we, we likely see the most uh, significant um, uh, contrib contribution to the, the situation. And for the most part, it's a pretty benign area along this, um, along the um, entire uh, eclipse region. There's no major weather systems like a trough like you see up here uh, further north and further south. So nothing really going on there that much from that standpoint there. Um, and if we look at the radar, uh, this is the forecast radar at uh, 18Z, you do see again some of the possibility of seeing some precipitation. Um, again, most of the significant pre pre precipitation will be likely be in the afternoon after the eclipse along through this region. Uh, you can also look at um, some of the uh, weather forecast office, offices do a pretty neat thing and that is um, they provide a forecast discussion so I provide that as part of my uh, application as well so if we go to the airport weather here and I select KDFW for Dallas Fort Worth where I'm trying to head in this particular situation you'll see that the discussion here will talk about uh, in this particular case, you can see here, the discussions here says, confidence continues to remain high, greater than 90% that will have at least a veil of high clouds, which we saw across central and, and north Texas on Monday um, during the eclipse time. These clouds may initially be thin early Monday morning, but should become thicker around the eclipse time. Uh, and it's confidence increasing. We'll have some low clouds in place, especially across our southeast counties and into central Texas. And we'll, I'll show you that in a bit. 
Uh, these will spread north through the day, but many areas may stay free of low clouds during the eclipse time. Again, this is in the Dallas Fort Worth area. The exact areas will be impacted by low clouds, likely won't be more uh, certain until sometime this weekend. Um, and confidence is high that showers and thunderstorms will spread north into the region on Monday, but likely after the eclipse time, again, what we were talking about. So current probability of at least some view availability in the Dallas-Fort Worth area is 40%. Chance of mean cloud cover is less than 50%. Um, and optimal viewing conditions, less than a 10% chance. Um, so unfortunately for Dallas-Fort Worth, it doesn't look very, very promising there. But if you decide to want to look at this um, in your area where you're concerned about um, uh, doing your, um, is you can actually go to weather.gov, find the area that you're, uh, you're concerned about, click on that part of that map, uh, and then go in and, and find the other map that's at the bottom here. Again, find that particular location that you're concerned about, wherever it happens to be, let's say Waco, Texas. Uh, and then you'll see on the right here, there's a forecast discussion tab. If you click on that, you'll be able to actually read through this discussion and some of the forecasters are actually providing that uh, eclipse cloud forecast information. So you can go ahead and read through that as well. So that's available on weather.gov. Uh, again, it's also offered on my uh, progressive web app, Easy Weather Brief as well. Um, and let's go back to my uh, app here real quick. And I wanna show you something. Um, and uh, let's go back to the map here. This is the, the map display, and what we're going to see on this map is you're going to see um, those station models show up here. Uh, it's a process of refreshing now. Uh, but this will show you, these are where we see ceilings, which means you have a broken or overcast sky, not scattered or few clouds, but broken or overcast. And this is early in the morning on Monday, but watch what happens to this as the day wears on as you get into the you know the sunrise kind of time frame you can see what what's happening here is that you you see this uh this progression of that those clouds moving further and further to the north um, so let me go ahead and just refresh this real quick and see if we got any additional information and i'll zoom in on this area a little bit more so you can see this oops too much so you can see how this is progressing uh, over time so that see if it refreshes here for us and you can see here that we start out early early in the morning 5z so that's in the overnight hours and you can see how those ceilings those cloud cover eventually starts to creep closer and closer up into the north as it was discussed in the, the forecast discussion there and we get to around 16z 17z and again, we're seeing a lot of the, a lot of the, um, uh, the particulars in terms of, of the cloud coverage. Uh, you can see the symbol here is showing a broken sky, not overcast necessarily. Overcast would show a, 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 a single uh, solid circle here. So there's not any overcast showing up, but there's a broken sky, which means you could have 60 to 70% of the sky covered in that case. Uh, but if you look up through here, um, again, this only goes out to 17Z. This doesn't actually hit you uh, at the time that the eclipse happens, but it just before it, uh, for the most part, looks like uh, there could be. Now, again, Rochester and, and parts of Niagara Falls, Buffalo, could see mostly high cover, and we're not showing that in this particular case in that region. Uh, so this is, again, a good indication of where the clouds are going to stop and start. So we're really right on that fine line between where the where the eclipse is and where the clouds are. Unfortunately, the timing is just not going to be uh, right for this. So that's what we'll we'll kind of end that here at this point in time. Again, I do appreciate uh, those that have joined. Um, hopefully, wherever you're going to be, you'll be able to see the eclipse. Take a lot of pictures and uh, and post some some in our comment section here on the videos, and let me know what you find out. Hopefully everybody will have a great weekend and we'll talk to you again soon.